Hello everyone, it's Dr. J again. <clears throat> um, I have with me Jam, so is going to help me explain and write the code for the search problem using an int array that we declare globally. Say hi to everyone, Jam. So, hi everyone. And I got more of a role. Why don't you read what the search problem is? To everyone. The source problem write and test a function that implements the source problem using a global array of integers called A for a match on a source argument B. If found, return the position of the first match. If not found, return N, the length of the array A. Okay, very good. So we have to declare the global array before we do anything else. Let's let's do that. Uh, so int um, a of how big should we make it? Let's make it like 16 is good. We don't want to make it too big. We don't want to make it too small. So let's give a list of 16 integers. Maybe we'll keep it from something like 1 to 50, the, the numbers. We don't want it to be too spread out. So we'll begin with 12, uh, 43, uh, 19, um, give me a number. 27. 27, give me another number. 35. 35, give me another number. 17. 17, give me another number. You can repeat. 26. It's okay to repeat the number too. 42. 42. 49. 49. 37. 37. 18. 18. Give me one repeated. 15. One. 15. 19. 19. Do we have 16 yet? 1, 2, no. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Four more. 14. 23. 24. 29. Is that it? 16? Yeah. Okay. Let's just count them to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fourteen, fifteen. Is there seventeen? It's one more. We have to delete one. We'll delete one. All right, I'll take out the twenty-four. Okay. Now let's write the prototype for the search function. We're not passing a parameter uh, for the array, but we are passing a parameter for the search argument. So that's the only parameter that we're passing, right? And we're returning the position, so it has to be int. I guess we could just call it search. Well, SRCH is clear enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> search. Um, so we have an int for the the uh, search uh, argument v, and that's it. Returns a position. So it's int search int will be the prototype for the search function. Um, let's end main. We'll end main before we begin main, and we'll. We'll type in the uh, logic for the search first. Okay, so int search int. Let's call it, we call it v. We said in the comment we call it v. Okay, so um, we're assuming that uh, we're searching the global array A, right? So precondition for this function, uh, global array A <coughs> has been de de defined and initialized. Has been initialized. Uh, should we also, you know what, let's also allow n to be passed, the length of the array. 
So let's change that prototype to int int. Okay, so bubble array A has been of integers. Of integers has been initialized. And the post condition what will be returned? The position of the first match, right? Yeah. On V will be returned. What about if no match? What's returned? Can't spell too well, huh? And if no match, what do we return then? N. Right. Okay, N, the length of the array. I think the comments, we wrote a lot more comments in code than yeah. in, in this particular program. Okay, so um, we're gonna we're gonna do a sequential search. Uh, proceed. We'll put another comment. We proceed by sequentially searching through the array. Sequentially searching as opposed to other techniques, right, like binary search. Same, sequentially searching. All right, so what we need a for loop, and probably we should declare a counter variable called i. I'll always like i, because I'm old-fashioned. i, j, k are my favorite letters for counting to a for loop. So int i equals zero which would be the first element of an array, is the zeroth element. And now, uh, uh, how would you write the for loop for int? Uh, we don't declare i anymore. For i, uh, actually, we don't need that at all. Well, we, we know i is zero. So for i less than, uh, less than n, oh, wait a second, we need up here. I got to put the second search <coughs> argument. Int and yeah. now we're good. So for i less than n, we keep we keep going. We increment i and keep going. Right. And what's the body of the for loop? If we have a match, how do we test for match? A of i equal to what? What would be a match? If A of i equal equal what? What are we looking to match on? What are we looking to match on? B. Yeah, on the search argument B. So does the, does the i-th position of A equal to a V? If it does, we return the position. So what do we, we don't return a of i, what do we return? N. We return i, the value of the position, the subscript, right? Now, if we go through that entire loop without a match, that means, without returning i, that means we didn't have a match. If we didn't have a match, what do we return? What did we say we should return on no match? N. Yeah, n. So this means no match. And this is the position of the match up here. The position of the first match. If there's a second or third match, there's no way for this function to pick it up. We would have to uh, modify the function in some way and do a little bit more manipulation. Now, how do we test this? Well, one way to quick test would be to Declare v up here as 
was equaling, uh, what's, let's say 35, right? Because we know 35 is in position what? Zero, one, two, two three, four. position four, right? So it should, pr it should print out position four if we test this function. So print out search of um, v comma 16 because there are 16 elements in the array and end them. It's a very simple test of the function. So this is test the function. and return zero. Okay, now let's uh, compile and run and keep your fingers crossed so we didn't make five errors, or four errors, or even one error. Uh, let's call it something better than untitled. Let's call it search. <coughs> S R C H is a fine name, right? Yeah. Save that. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Alright, what did we do wrong? Uh, expected right to run before square token on line 19. Right here. Square paren before write token. Oh, I got a. What I do? Put in an extra, an extra, right, an extra square paren for no re, for no reason. No extra charge though, right? Yeah. Oh, All right. Okay. So it looks good. Thirty five was we expected four, right? Yeah. Well, we got four. Let's let's change it to. Uh, Another one that it's good that there's a max. Where, what there's two nineteens, right? There's two nineteens. Yeah, let's make sure it gives us the first one, not the second one. So let's run it. Uh, compile and run. Yep, yeah. gave us the correct one. Now let's get let's pick one that um, isn't it may not be in the array. Oh, I'm sorry, I ran it too quickly. Run again. Uh, let's change it to um, what's not in the array. 30. What? 30? 30. 30. 30? Yeah. 30 is not in the array. Okay, so we should get 16 print out, right? In this case. Compile and run. Okay, yeah. so it looks like it's working. But let's uh, make it a little more sophisticated. Let's allow the user to uh, uh, type in the uh, search argument. So we'll just go into V and let's uh, read read in the search argument from the user. So ask the user, uh, what would you like to search on? What would you like to search on? Anyway. And C N V. And now it's uh, at least the user can input it instead of uh, the program having to. Minor, minor, very small change. So let's say 12. That's the zeroth element, right? And let's allow a loop so the user can keep on searching, right? Yeah. So let's make a do loop. Let's make a do loop. Do uh, why does it generate that right squiggly for me? It's annoying. Uh, do while and not equal to minus one. Is that a good sentinel? I guess so. They're all positive numbers. Well, well, n is positive. 
It's good enough. Any anything is a sent no if it's negative. How's that? Okay, do while n greater than zero. So if the user types in minus one, 16 should print, and then um, let's print a message. Thank you for using our search function. Always to, good to be polite. Yeah. Thank you for using our sequential search pro, pro function. Of course, right now we're thanking ourselves because we're the ones that are using it. Okay, let's try it. Look good? Look good to you, Johnson. You don't have to close it. Um, no, it's fine. I think it's okay. Oops. Okay. Messed up again, huh? I put this. It's always a right squiggly thing. Uh, N was not declared in this scope. Okay. While, while V is greater than zero. This is called Dr. J. You got to tell me, Dr. J, you're an absent minded professor. Go and say it. It's okay. Hello, I, it's Dr. J. You're an absent minded professor. Go ahead, say it. For absent. You're an absent minded professor. Tell me, I deserve it. <laughs> no. You don't want to tell me that? You scared I'm going to give you a B instead of an A if you tell me that? No. <laughs> I gave you permission to tell me that. Okay, let's run it. All right. Well, what? What? Give me a search argument. Thirty-five. We know that should be four, right? Yeah. And um, give me another one. Nineteen. Nineteen. Is that in there? Yeah. What else is in there? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. And forty-three. I think is in there. Yeah. And twenty. Forty-nine. Forty. Forty-nine. And then what's not in there? 30? Yeah. All right, it, to give 16, so we know it's not in there. And maybe we should print a message instead of, if it's 16, no match. You know. What would you like to search on? Minus one just to get out of this. Thank you. Yeah, all right, so now let's change it slightly to print a message if there's no match. Instead of printing 16, let's print um, um, there's no match. So if uh, search, well maybe we should save search in, some, in a variable. Uh, position, call it. Let's just make it in v comma position. So um, let's let's do that right here. Pause equal search of v sixteen and semicolon and now an if statement. Why did why did it put in an extra squiggly? I wonder. That mean, me and the squigglies don't get along too well. So if um, pause equals 16, let's print a message that there's no match. No match on search argument. No match on search argument, and then what's the value of the search argument? Let's call it V, right? Yeah. And let's put in a space there. Else. We go ahead and write out the position of the match. Um, 
Maybe maybe we should write the first the position of the first matches. So now we have a little, I think we enhanced it a little bit, right? Let's try it. Hopefully it didn't yeah. cause any errors. Yeah, it's a little... Okay, so 43 and 27. And what else is in there? 35 and 20. What's towards the end? 20 49. 23 is towards the end, right? 49. This is next to last, 23. Yeah. 49 is last? Yeah. No, 49 is in the middle. Unless, it, unless it's twice. And that, what's one that's not there? 30, right? Okay, no match on, yeah. And now anything negative. Maybe we shouldn't have that message, you know, match on search <laughs> argument minus 11. You want to get rid of that? I think it's okay. It's okay? Yeah. All right. If it's okay with you, it's okay with me. So we'll leave it. Thank you very, very much. We're going to end right here. Thank you. Thank you.